Hi, this is Shelley Chapman, Senior Educational Consultant at the Idea Center, and this is a short video to explain how to complete the Idea Faculty Information Form. You may be wondering why faculty need to complete a form. Most of the time, end of course surveys are only completed by students. The reason faculty are asked to complete a form is related to how IDEA defines teaching effectiveness. Most surveys judge teaching effectiveness by the degree to which the instructor's methods are like a model teacher. The philosophy of the IDEA system, though, is different. The primary indicant of teaching effectiveness in the IDEA system is how well students rate progress on the types of learning their instructors targeted. The Faculty Information Form provides you with the opportunity to say what you are targeting in your course and what you are not targeting. Your results will reflect how well students make progress on the types of learning you target. That's why the IDEA system uses two forms, one for faculty and one for students. Here you see the paper version of the Faculty Information Form on the left, the green form. This is sometimes referred to as the FIF. The Student Diagnostic Survey Form is on the right, the maroon form. The same set of 12 learning objectives is listed on each form. Faculty select which objectives they targeted in the course as essential or as important, while the other objectives are marked as of minor or no importance. Students rate the progress they made on the learning objectives. This is the most important part of the faculty information form, the 12 general learning objectives. These are made up of objectives from six broad learning categories, basic cognitive background, application of learning, expressiveness, intellectual development, lifelong learning, and team skills. It's not realistic to think that, in a single course, students can make significant progress on all or even most of the 12 learning objectives. For this reason, and because of the limited amount of time available in a given course, most instructors will be able to seriously address about three to five learning objectives. In selecting essential or important objectives for a particular course, you ask these three questions. First, is it a significant part of the course? Do I do something specific to help the students accomplish this objective? And finally, does the student's progress on this objective affect his or her grade? If the answer is yes to each of these questions, then that objective should be marked as essential or important. Remember that if you select minor or no importance for an objective, you're not saying that it's not important. You're saying that you are not targeting that objective in your particular course. Above all, be true to your course. If you're teaching a course such as a clinical or internship, where you want your students to apply what they've learned in their regular classes, it would be altogether appropriate to select only the application objective. If, on the other hand, you're teaching a capstone course in the major, it's altogether appropriate for you to be targeting more than five objectives, so be true to your course. Only student responses to the objectives you targeted are used to calculate the progress on relevant objectives portion of your summative score. When you select objectives, you customize your report to the types of learning you target in your course. If you forget to select any objectives, our system says that something must be important, and so all the objectives default to important. The faculty information form includes some other items to be completed. For example, you'll be asked to select the discipline in which you are teaching. The purpose of this item is to provide you with comparison data in your report. The local code field is a section of the form that allows institutions to capture data for their own research purposes. For instance, perhaps your institution wishes to look at how your online courses are doing compared to your traditional courses, or how your part-time instructors are performing compared to your full-time instructors. Institutions can decide what types of data they would like to capture and how they would like to mark the local code. There are also questions about the context in which you have taught your course. How you respond to these contextual items in no way influences your scores. The purpose of your responses here is for your institution to conduct its own research by looking at aggregate data. If you have questions about how to complete the faculty information form, I would like to point you to several resources. First, there is a document on our website called Directions to Faculty. I think you will find this resource to be helpful because it provides you with the information you've heard on this presentation and also definitions for all the terms used on the FIF. Another source you may find to be helpful is the IDEA blog, which contains posts that explain in more detail the purpose and function of the FIF. The IDEA Help Community is another option for you to consider if you have questions about the faculty information form. The Help Community provides you with answers to many questions faculty have already asked, but you can also post your own question and receive prompt responses from a member of the IDEA staff or perhaps from another client. 
If you prefer, you can send an email message to info at theideacenter.org and we'll be happy to help you.